Today we're going to be talking about a couple of techniques to add beautiful overlays to your images like textures, patterns or even designs. But mainly we're going to focus on one thing and that is the approach. You see when you download a texture from the internet, it's just not that you add that texture into Photoshop above the layer of your image and change the blend mode to overlay or soft light. It's not limited to that. There's so much more you can do with it. It depends upon the image, depends upon the mood that you want to set, depends upon your creative calm. With blend diffs, blend modes, adjustment layers, complex masking, there's so much to do. It's just not limited to those blend modes. And also I'm gonna give you five textures to really get started with this. So let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this image or any or all of the five textures, make sure to check the link in the description. So let's go ahead and import the texture. So here we have our image already imported and now let's go ahead and import the texture. It's more of a design. Just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Okay, let's make it a little bigger. And let's first of all, let's try in different blend modes. So have a look screen. This looks good. And let's try soft light. Do you know what I think? I think that soft light looks good in the inside of the umbrella and screen looks good on the outside. And this is kind of not a recipe. This is just an approach. I don't want to teach you how to do this with this image because your image is going to be a little different. So this is an approach. Try in different blend modes. See which one looks good. Which looks good to wear. Just keep on thinking. Okay. So now when I look at this image, have a look, she's holding an umbrella, anything which is inside of umbrella, how about having a different blend mode in there, right? So let's turn this on and let's change the blend mode to soft light and let's mask in this area. Let's turn this off for a second and take the quick selection tool and just make a rough selection. Select the polygonal lasso tool. If you want to add to the selection, hold shift. And if you hold shift, look at the cursor. It changes to a plus icon with the polygonal lasso tools icon, which means that now you can add to the selection. And if you hold alt or option, it becomes minus. Now you can subtract from the selection. Okay. You want to add a little bit to the selection. So hold shift. Also, there are just icons here. This one is for the plus. This one is for the minus. Okay, so let's add a little bit to the selection, just like that. And there we are. Let's create a mask. Turn this on and click on the mask button. The circle inside of a rectangle, this is the icon. And now we have it just limited to the inside of the umbrella. Now let's feather the edges a little bit. It's a bit too harsh. So open up the properties with the mask selected, go to windows and then click on properties. To add a feather, just add a little bit feather to it because it looks a little rigid. And also, how about using the brush to really mix it up. So take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white this time. To toggle between the foreground and the background, you know the shortcut, it's X. Okay, X for Xmas or xylophone. Okay, let's decrease the float around somewhere 10 and then just paint in the edges to make it really match a little bit with the outside. Okay, now it's matching a little bit to the outside. And let's make the foreground color now black. Press X and let's match the outside with the little inside. So you can just play with it. Do whatever you want with it. Just really play with it. Okay. Now, let's make a copy of this one and a lot of things. Let's make a copy of this. Press controller command J and let's name it up. So this one was soft light. We'll name it SL and this one name it screen SC. Change the blend mode to screen. But we wanted this effect outside of the umbrella. So what to do? Select the mask and invert it out, right? We want this in areas we didn't want in this one. So invert it. How to invert it? Press controller command I. Have a look how beautiful this looks. This effect just limits itself to the outside of the umbrella. So now you can try in a lot of stuff. Maybe 
come to SL and make a copy of it and change it to screens. And there we go and decrease the opacity of this one. Just play around. Have a look. And make another copy of it. And totally paint the mask with black. Control or Command A. We're just playing with this. So there is no recipe. Just play on. Game on. Fill it up with black. Alt. Backspace. Okay. Now Control or Command D to deselect that. Take the brush. Make sure the foreground color is white. And then paint in a little inside the umbrella. See how it looks? Maybe increase the flow. Just a magic umbrella. Just like that. Have a look. So have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. There's so much more we can do with this. Suppose we wanted to draw the attention of the viewer towards the face of the model. So let's make a group of all these layers. Select the topmost texture of the design layer, press and hold shift. Select the bottommost one, press controller command G. Now create a mask of this group. Click on this button and let's paint in black in her face. So flow 20. There, you bring back some details in her face. Have a look. Maybe a little in her hand. And there we are. Have a look before, after. Let's bring back a little more with white. Just paint here a little bit, there a little bit. And that pretty much looks nice. We can also resize the texture separately. So let's go ahead and press Control Command T with this selected. And if you try to make it bigger, the mask also becomes bigger, but we didn't want that, right? Why is this happening? This is happening because the mask and the image is linked. And to detach them, we need to break what? The link. And to break the link, what do you need to do? Click on the link. So there's a link, literally there's a link between the mask and the image. Just click on the link and it breaks the link. Now both are independent. Controller command T on the image, it makes the image bigger. Controller command T on the mask, it makes the mask bigger or smaller. So both are now independent of each other. Now you can make it bigger and just adjust it according to your desire. Okay, maybe let's try in different stuff. Which one looks good to you? Totally depends upon your personal choice. So I think this looks really nice. Above the umbrella, there's a little bit of brightness. Hit enter. And let's decrease the opacity of this one. And by the way, you can also try blend if with this. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, increase the opacity. It opens up the layer styles dialog box. You can try and take the slider of this layer from left to right. And you can make it smooth by holding the alter option key, clicking on this and make it a little smooth. Make the transition between the area that is going invisible and the area which is not going invisible smoother. What this slider does, of this layer, this slider deletes every dark area of this layer. The current layer, the layer which is selected, it deletes or makes invisible everything which is dark in the current layer. So if you take the slider to the right, as you can see the dark areas are slowly and steadily getting invisible. If you do the opposite, the bright areas will go away. Okay. So we want to delete a little bit of dark areas and we want to make it smooth. It's quite harsh. So press and hold alt and click on this to make it smooth. Just like that. Okay. Now how about transforming the model a little bit? How about making her face a little more interesting? So here's what we can do. Okay. How about adding a little brightness here in the umbrellas? So let's open up, make another copy of the screen layer. Okay, this is, I think this is screen. Yes, this is screen. And let's increase the opacity of this one. We need not make a copy of this. Increase the opacity of this one. Okay, that looks pretty nice. And let's come to the mask, take the brush and just fine tune it a bit. That looks pretty nice. You can just control the opacity and see how much it looks good. Now, Let's play with the skin a little bit. Let's give it a little more porcelain effect. So let's just collapse this group. So this is before, this is after. So this is pretty much the group. Now, add an adjustment layer. Select the background layer and then create an adjustment layer. Let's try hue saturation. Okay. And now, 
If you want to change the color of your skin, here's what you need to do. Make a good selection of the color of the skin. Let's turn this off for a second to have a better look. Click on this hand icon and click on our skin. Now, take the slider of the hue all the way to the left and this is just for indication purposes. I've already discussed this. Now move this, make it narrow first and then move this from the middle and stop when most of her skin is selected, okay? Now take the slider of the left to the left and just when all of her skin is selected, stop. Do it same with the right. It's selecting extra, okay? We don't want that. You want the exact selection. Let's make it a little bigger and let's understand this better, okay? So let's just make it a little bigger. There we go. Okay, so we need a perfect selection of her skin. Here's what we do. Make it too narrow, very narrow, and then move it from the middle. Find a place where most of her skin is selected. And when you find that place, take the right slider, the inside right side slider, gradually to the right. And when most of her skin is selected, stop. If you go too much, it will select all the other areas. We don't want that. Just stop at the point where it selects most of her skin. Just stop at this point. And do the same with the left one. Take it to the left and stop at just the point where most of her skin is selected. Now you can take the outside sliders to the left and right to make the selection smoother. Now bring back the hue to zero and let's try increasing the lightness. Gives it a porcelain effect. And then let's try increasing saturation even a little bit. There we go. Have a look at the before and after, before and after. Drags more attention, right? And let's add another curves adjustment layer. Okay, and this kind of <laughs> looks long because we made that long. And let's just increase it, the contrast, just like that. Now the red is too much. Add another hue saturation adjustment layer and decrease the reds. Let's go to the reds, select the reds, and just decrease the saturation of the reds, just like that. Now let's turn on this. Have a look. Now I can take down the opacity of the whole group. So the opacity, there you are, and there you go. And that's pretty much it. It's all about the approach. I can go ahead and play with it for hours and hours. It totally depends upon you. Now whatever I did might be completely different for your image, which is good. Just look at the image, look at the texture, and think, what can I do with it? Try masking, try blend if, try blend modes, try adjustment layers, try complex masking. It will be fun. I hope this video gives you an insight and I hope this helps. And if it does, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys on the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.